general mechanism of how sodium borohydride reduces ketones and aldehydes um, to alcohols and how um, lithium aluminum hydride reduces everything, right? So ketones, aldehydes, esters, and carboxylic acids. So what if you're given this molecule and you decide to add sodium borohydride in the first step and then the second step you have H2O? Simply think of sodium borohydride and lithium and aluminum hydride as some sort of H minus. Sorry for my sickness. So the first step in mechanism, this is going to come, attack, and these are going to kick off on the oxygen. Now, this oxygen is slightly electronegative. This oxygen, um, the, the carbon is slightly electropositive, so it's very electro. Uh, it could, it could, it kind of opens a space up for attack because again, this carbon oxygen bond is very polar. So you can imagine the oxygen kind of withdrawing some electron density away from that carbon, um, and so we get something that looks like this. We get an oxygen that's negatively charged and an extra hydrogen, right? Now, in the second step of the mechanism, in the second step of the mechanism, uh, water comes in um, and simply just act as some source of protons. So this oxygen comes in, kind of take um, that, that, that that hydrogen and kicks off the and kicks off the bond on the oxygen, right? And we get something to look like this. Right? It's reduction. And then again, this reaction happens twice. Right? This reaction kind of happens twice and also reduces this one. And we get the observed product. Right? So there's just a general mechanism for on the reduction of a uh, ketone um, to an alcohol. From sodium borohydride, and the mechanism is also plausible for aldehydes. It's it's it's, it's the same thing. Lithium aluminum hydride, right? So, what if we're given this molecule and we have an ester? We add some sort of H minus in the presence in the second step in the water, and this is just lithium aluminum hydride. Now, remember, lithium aluminum hydride reduces ketones, esters, carboxylic acids. Right, aldehydes, right? So the first step in the mechanism again, this carbon is slightly electro uh, electrophilic. So the H minus comes in an attack, kicks off those electrons on the oxygen, get an oxygen that's negatively charged. We we'll still have this O here, but we have an extra hydrogen that we just added. Right. In the second step in the mechanism, it turns out that it's much more it is much more stable for this. Um oxygen to form an aldehyde and to keep this ester here. So those two electrons are going to come form that double bond between that carbon and oxygen. Simultaneously, simultaneously um, these electrons will kick off on the oxygen and we get the product to break, break apart. So we get something that looks like this. Oxygen that's negatively charged. Now, this is our intermediate. This is our major product here, this aldehyde here. That we gotta worry about, and this doesn't stay in and this doesn't stay in solution uh, for too long. So in the second step, so the next step in the mechanism is that some sort of H minus comes in a tap slightly electrophilic carbon, kicks off the oxygen now kicks off those electrons on the oxygen, right, and you get something to look like this: oxygen negatively charged. We have our hydrogen that we added in the first step, but we also had a, we also added another hydrogen, right? And we also have this oxygen over here that is negatively charged. And the last step of the mechanism, water comes in as some proton source. Um, those oxygen comes in, took take off on those proton, kicks off on um, those electrons on the oxygen. And you get your neutral alcohol. Oh, and the same thing happens for this one too. So you also get an alcohol, a mixture of alcohols. Now, notice that these two are primary. So write this in your notes. You get primary alcohols. You get primary alcohols from esters and carboxylic acid. Uh, when we talk about lithium aluminum hydride, 
And that's the general mechanism for these kind of important reagents.